this conference will now be recorded. Please take it upon yourself to make sure that, you know, you remind me for recording. <clears throat> so uh, let me send out a quick message on WhatsApp saying that the session has started, guys. Uh, just give me one moment, please. Okay, folks, so um, let's get started now. So as, as always, so let me first come up with a quick recap as to what we have discussed in the last class, okay? <clears throat> so especially in the last class, you know, we have discussed there are two ways of stopping the test. One is stop and one is shut down, okay? So which one do you recommend, guys? One is stop and one is shut down. So which one you would use to you you would use to stop the test? You would stop it uh, or you would want to shut down it. So option one or option two. So which one would you recommend? One or two? I want to hear from all of you quickly, guys. This is a recap. Okay. I want you to actively participate with all the questions. Okay. So. <clears throat> Okay, now look at the definition and tell me stop will abruptly stop the test that is running on the local machine. Shutdown will stop the test gracefully. Now you tell me one or two. This is one and this is two. Quickly. Okay, so Namrata says two, Anil says two, Gaurav one, Hagus two. So you wanted to shut it down. You don't want to stop it because stop will abruptly stop it. So if the thread or the user is doing something, you don't want it to want him to abruptly stop it. You know, let it take a little bit of time, but stop it gracefully. Okay. Always you would like to shut down the uh, shut down the test, not stop it, but shut it down. Okay. Don't stop it, but shut it down in general. Okay. Now, wonderful guys. So uh, I've told you about the templates. Okay. Uh, usually you'll start you'll start the JMeter and before recording the script. Okay. You build the structure using the template. Okay, so I've given you the assignments as well. Nobody has submitted the assignments yet. I'm expecting that you would submit it. Okay, so you would start building it from the templates, not, I mean, you can do it from the scratch as well, which will be a lot of work, but it's better to use the templates. Then we went on and then uh, executed the test in a non GUI mode. So <clears throat> you browse to the bin folder. Okay, browse to the bin folder uh, from the command line okay folder from the command line and then and then okay then type this command jmeter dot bad okay if you just say enter it will open the jmeter then you said no 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 you're saying that don't open the v of jmeter so to tell that okay you say hyphen and n okay then you run the test for hyphen and t and the test name whatever it is let's say the test name is temp.xl jmx uh, 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 okay then once the test is executed you want the results as well so you want the log as well slash l gives the log okay so you say temp log dot jpl so this is the command that you can use to execute the test but there are different variations of this command itself so if you wanted to get the variations of it you say jmeter dot back and then hyphen help it will give you all the help. Do you actually have to remember this? No, you just remember this. So if you say help automatically, it will give you this command. So you can type the command. But for the interview purposes, I would expect that you would remand this. Remember this and then you would talk about this command. Okay. And then <clears throat> and then uh, in the interview, they might ask you, would you, okay, you should say that you have worked. So you will immediately ask you, did you execute the test on GUI mode or non GUI mode? So what would you say? Okay. So option one GUI, option two non GUI. So what would you say? Okay. Or in the real time, who, how the actual test will be executed in the GUI or non GUI? So option one GUI, option two non GUI. Quickly. Okay. Wonderful. Option GUI, option, option two. So you would want to execute in the non GUI mode because, because the performance of J meter is good. Not the performance of the application or the performance of whatever. No, the JMeter will work 
appropriately using the minimum resources of your desktop if you run in a non view mode okay so all the resources which are there on your desktop will be given to the users not to the jmeter itself or not to the jmeter gui or something like that so the performance of jmeter will be good which means that the jmeter will not be hanged up or the jmeter will not have any issues while executing the test okay the jmeter tool itself is having the issues then no the performance results will not be good so to make sure that jmeter will not be an overhead on your desktop okay it is better to execute in a non gui mode okay so that's what we have seen in the last class so today we will start looking into okay the very first thing i want, want to concentrate is the controllers yes we have been discussing about the controllers all this while but now we will do some extensive study of the controllers now you will understand the significance of the controllers so as i am talking about the controllers okay as i am talking about the controllers guys halfway through okay halfway through the controllers okay i might have to deviate a little bit okay so deviate a little bit and then talk about couple of things okay so as i am talking about controllers i am not talking about just controllers but i will be deviating a little bit okay i will be talking about two things one is um flow control okay flow control or some people would like to call it as high uh, hierarchy okay so this is important guys in the interview they might ask about this hierarchy okay and the second thing is okay so there are something of jmeter exclusive functions are there i might have to talk about these two things okay somewhere in between okay so i'll touch upon this i will try to understand this in full length and this one we will touch upon so that whatever is required for me to continue with the controllers i'll talk about this and once the controllers are timers are done we will talk about in depth about this jmeter functions at the later point of time okay so <clears throat> now let me start about let me start with the controllers guys so let me invoke my jmeter here okay let me pick up some script okay some useful script okay so issue script is there uh, soap jpet store.js final script okay so final script let me see what's there in the final script okay something is there here okay sign in sign in okay wonderful so uh, uh, hang on guys so here i have sign in okay properly organized it's kind of difficult to get this one okay so uh, this is good but i don't want this one at this point of time maybe class 4 script itself is might be useful but i i think i messed it okay not messed it much okay okay so instead of all this guys so let me let me record a, a proper script okay <coughs> i want something you know which is is not what i want uh, okay hang on guys one i'm looking for a, a decent script or i have to go ahead and record it or maybe i'll make changes okay accordingly view results are there i haven't stored it okay so let me quickly figure out what is for what okay so this is for launch i believe okay and this is for login okay this is click on sign in this is launch and this is login and uh, this could be for sign off this too is for sign off okay but what is this for this is for login okay oh. okay so okay so let me name it appropriately this seems to be for launch okay this is click on sign in okay i'll say click on sign in okay this is for login okay and this is for login as well okay and uh, this is for looks like this is for uh, log out Logout two, and then finally let's say logout three. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm giving some appropriate names for this particular, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, sampler scripts. Okay, now this is the script. I don't want it to record it. So I'm using the existing scripts, but gave the meaningful names to the samplers. Okay, so meaningful names to the samplers, guys. Okay, <coughs> wonderful. Okay, so now let's talk about a simple controller. Okay, we are talking about the controllers, guys. Talk about the simple controller. As you can see, simple controller provides no functionality beyond that of grouping, primarily to organize samplers and other logic controllers. Okay, so uh, simple controller by itself doesn't give you any additional functionality, but except for grouping. Okay, when I said grouping, okay, watch here carefully. Uh, watch here carefully. Okay, so. Let's say I've added a simple controller. Okay, this is a simple controller to be honest. Okay, so here you see, let me add a simple controller inside this. Okay. Okay, so let me create two to three of them. One, two, okay. No, not inside that. Okay, so I'm copying it and then here inside this, I'm creating two to three simple controllers. Now you see the first simple controller. What I'll do is to, uh, to, 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 to group these logins. There are two samplers which are there for logins. So I'll put these two samplers into this simple controller. Okay. So now these two samplers are then grouped into one single, uh, one single controller. Okay. Now you can name this as a login. You can name this as login. So basically I have tried to group these two samplers which are relevant into into a particular folder sort of thing. Okay, so that is what it is. Then I have another simple controller. So I'll move these three samplers into this simple controller. Okay, so all the three samplers related to logout. So I moved it accordingly. Then you name this as a logout. Okay, name this as a logout. This simple controller looks like I've added it extra. Now you see this is launch. This is click on sign in. These two samplers are for login. These three are for logout. So I've grouped all these three into one simple controller for login and three into some one simple controller for login. This is logout, launch, and this one. So I didn't create one more simple controller over here uh, for launch because kind of not required. Or uh, then, you know, this is click. Okay. So this is how a simple controller will be used to be honest, guys. Okay. For grouping purposes. For grouping purposes, to be to be see, you see, this is a simple controller. Again, you can say that this is for maybe a login script. To be honest, okay, the login script is what you can say. And you see, so in the login script, you know, these are all the samplers are there. Okay, launch, click, and then in login, there seems to be two samplers, and logout, there seems to be two samplers. Now, this is easy on I. That's about it. So other than this one, the simple controller by itself doesn't have any additional functionality, guys. Any additional functionality. Are we clear this, all of you? Are we clear? Are we clear? Yeah, okay. So it's just for a grouping purposes so that it looks the script you can organize in a way which makes sense to you and it looks good to you. That's about it. Other than that, the simple controller doesn't have any extra um, functionality by itself. Okay. So Kumar, you have been saying that, you know, it doesn't have any extra functionality. It doesn't provide any extra features or something like that. What does that actually mean? So when I talk about other controllers, this is when you exactly understand uh, when I say simple controller doesn't provide any extra functionality. Okay. Now, <clears throat> If you still didn't understood it, no, not an issue. Okay, going forward, definitely you will understand it better when I start talking about the other controllers. Okay, just by this simple script, you know, I'm not able to explain it clearly, guys. So let me create, let me record another script, you know, which has, uh, uh, which has certain, uh, you know, uh, uh, samples, a good number of samples. Okay, so let me quickly record it so that I'll be able to explain this better. Okay, so. <clears throat> Oh, okay. What did I do? Okay. So let me build it. Let me record it. So usually people start with the template. So I'm starting with the template itself. Okay. So uh, template as well. So <clears throat> now whatever the recording happens, it will be there in the recording controller automatically will be taken care of. So let me create uh, the first thing is set up the proxy. So let me create the proxy actually. Okay. Hang on guys. One second. please.
sorry guys so i am setting up the proxies guys so that i can report it record it okay now let me go ahead and record it start recording okay uh, certificate okay okay so let me see if, if if the recording happens because it was saying that you know there was some issue with the certificate and all that okay but let me see if the recording happens i'm good to go if not you know i have to go around and play with the uh, with the certificates so let me see the recording is happening here okay the recording is happening i'm happy with that okay <laughs> click then go ahead and log in then you click on fish okay click on fish okay select a product okay Check out. Confirm payment details. And then confirm. Okay, then sign out or log out. Okay, so this is good number, good amount of script that got generated now. Now I can show you uh, like how this controllers works. Okay, so <clears throat> now you see there is launch. How many samplers are there? There is only one sampler. Uh, okay, the, it is it got recorded in the transaction controller. Ideally, I didn't want it, it to, but it got recorded into the. Uh, it has created the transaction controller and got recorded inside the transaction controller. Uh, what is it? Hang on one second. Okay. So if I go this one by default, it's happening. Or is there any setting here? Okay, keep alive. Uh, put each group in a transaction controller. That's what I have done. Okay, so let me go ahead and record. It has recorded appropriately. To be honest, it got recorded appropriately. This is what I wanted it honestly. Uh, but uh, but okay um, okay uh, I can take it from here. Okay, I can take it from here. Okay, wonderful wonderful. Okay, so. <clears throat> Uh, uh, this this is good. Okay, this is good. So let me take it from here itself. Samplers. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Let me go ahead and record it. Today I'm a little confused, guys. So just ignore uh, if I'm not making sense. Okay. Launch and uh, do not group the samplers, right? So. Okay. Hang on, hang on. I think it will go ahead and append what's there again here. So let me clear everything which is there in this one. So give me one moment, guys. I'm trying to record it. Okay. So, <clears throat> but I wanted in a particular way the samplers needs to be generated. That's why I'm, I'm, you know, uh, I'm, I'm doing it twice. Okay. Okay, so guys, <clears throat> now the recording has happened. Okay, now there is no transaction controllers, nothing got recorded, just the samplers got recorded. So hang on, guys, one second.
sorry guys okay now we have all the uh, all the samplers that we wanted now you see now let me create a simple controller <clears throat> now you can see why the controllers will be used okay so i create a simple controller and let me give the name okay name to this simple controller okay so probably uh, instead of giving the name okay just give me a moment okay so let me do it this way okay um, yeah so uh, now here is the launch part of it which is this is the launch this is click and this is login so all the way till here it is a login piece of code and here from here on it is related to the fish and payment and here on it is related to logout so what i will do is all the launch and login i put it into one simple controller so let me add a simple controller here <clears throat> Yeah, simple controller. So let me call this simple controller as more like uh, login. Okay. Oh, hang on, guys. Okay. So let me call this as a login. Okay. And now move the launch and login piece of code into this controller called login. Okay. Now create another simple controller. Okay. Maybe here purchase a fish or whatever it is. Purchase a fish. Okay. Now, all the purchase related to the fish, okay, so all the samplers which is related to purchasing the fish move into here, which is clicking on the fish, add to cart, check out, payments, confirm, everything is there in one single controller, okay, and finally, you can have one more simple controller, okay, which is logout or sign out, okay, name it appropriately, okay, now move the samplers move the samplers related to logout into this particular logout okay so now there is nothing there in the recording controller if you wish you can delete it okay if you wish you can take it off so let me take out the recording controller now you have login so logout needs to move all the way down okay so okay login should be top purchase fish should be next and logout so now you see the overall script has been um, has been put into three simple controllers one is the login simple controller wherein login related samplers are there and then purchase the fish simple controller wherein all the samplers related to purchasing the fish is over here and logout so if you look at it and if you have done load runner there is something which is very very common this is this is basically like a user in it and this is like an action and this is a user in user in isn't it isn't it uh, identical this isn't it identical have you seen this is more like a user in it and this is more like action and this is more like user in. if you wanted to put it that way you can do it you can organize the script or organize the samplers in a way you know which makes sense to you so that you'll be able to understand it better if somebody is looking at it they also can know that you know this is what the script is for okay this is where you will be able to launch and log in this is where you will be able to purchase this fish and this is where you will be able to log out but here in this purchase fish there are multiple transactions here in this login there are multiple transactions here there is in logout there are multiple transactions okay <clears throat> so now what i can say a controller can have a controller can have multiple multiple transactions okay can include multiple transactions okay can include multiple transactions okay now one more statement i am making it guys tell me if this makes sense to you okay a transaction okay a transaction a transaction can can include multiple samples does this make sense to you guys a transaction can include multiple samplers okay the second statement for how many of the people it makes sense guys second statement a transaction can include multiple samplers okay if you don't believe in believe me watch it launch there are two samplers so which means that if you calculate and calculate the response times for launch okay so you know you have to you have to add the response times for these two samplers you have to add the response times for these two samples which is launch okay so a transaction can include multiple samplers here these two samplers make the launch these two samplers make click on uh, click on a fish 
okay so uh, login also is supposed to ca capture two okay not sure why it didn't capture actually this is login okay these two makes login you see if you see username and password and all that this is actually login sample okay so <coughs> login makes login 32 is what i will do okay so they have maintained some naming standards here 30 31 32 33 so these two samplers make login okay so the login transaction okay these two samplers make login transaction okay so you see in a in a, in a particular controller there are multiple transactions there are two transactions here in this controller and and then these two samplers make one transaction these two samplers make one transaction these two samplers make one transaction okay a controller includes multiple transactions a transaction includes multiple samples okay now you see other than grouping the the the, the sampler the controller the simple controller doesn't give you any extra benefits any extra benefits other than grouping them into it and typically what i see performance tester jmeter experts will do is the thread name they don't leave it as thread name they give a name the script name will be the thread name what would be the script name for this particular script maybe you can say buy fish or purchase fish okay so this is what the script name for this one so the script name buy fish first what it includes login then purchase a fish and log out this is how a final script would look like as okay they don't just leave the thread name just like that they give a script so now this test plan includes how many scripts only one script you can you have one more script inside it just add one more thread group add one more thread group and then here you say you can say purchase dog or buy dog buy dog okay <clears throat> okay slowly i think you are getting a feel for it guys now okay how a final script would look like now you see you would have a buy dog inside that you would have again a simple controller okay you would have a simple controller okay then again probably you would have a login okay then you have maybe here purchase a dog and then purchase a dog and then probably a log out okay now you see this particular test plan okay this particular test plan which is like let's say it's a load test okay let's say it's a load test okay so this particular test plan which is a load test includes how many thread groups two thread groups the first thread group is for buying a fish and how many controllers it has three simple controllers okay login purchase a fish and logout login login controller contains all the samplers which is related to login purchase a fish controller contains all the um, all the samplers related to purchase a fish and logout it's a simple controller contains all the samplers related to logout does it contain only one script the load test might contain multiple scripts right so this is the first script it is now the second script which is purchase a dog or a buy a dog again it has its own stuff then it can have n number of scripts okay let's say you are running a load test with 10 scripts okay you know if you wanted to create a test scenario guys you have to create a test scenario it contains multiple scripts okay it contains multiple scripts okay buy a fish okay <clears throat> buy a dog okay cancel order maybe okay so let's say this test scenario which is a load test okay which is a load test contains these three scripts okay so how it will be hang on guys once Hello, it disturbed you. Sorry, extremely sorry, guys. So my kids today, for whatever the reason, they don't want to go to school. Okay, so it will all come back to me. So I am the person who has to drive all that. Now you know. Uh, uh, I mean, they, they don't feel like going to the school. That's about it. You know, on that day they don't go to the school. Okay. Anyways, so <clears throat> now you see. So 
these three scripts make up the test scenario, which is the load test. So for the first buyer fish, what do you have? A thread group inside which you have all the simple controllers, inside which you have the relevant samplers. Again, there is one more thread group. And then for order, cancel order, you would have one more thread group inside it. Okay. So this will be cancel order. Now you are getting a feel for this, how, how a final script would look like. How a final scenario, not script, here we are talking about the scenario, okay? How a final scenario would look like. Are we clear guys, all of you? Are we clear all of you? <laughs> Abdul, so we do not have a break. Uh, I, I might <laughs> need a break, okay? okay. Uh, in our company, one user action, transaction is captured under one controller, transaction controller. Uh, it, it, it helps to get the response times. Come on, just hang on, okay? Uh, we are not done yet, okay? Slowly I'm building, okay? So, Gaurav Dhatya, I do understand exactly what your point is. I'll exactly come to that, okay? But my, my way of teaching is I don't come to the point directly because most of the people doesn't understand the point of doing it. Because you're doing the real time, you will right away understand as to why they are doing it that way. But the students, you know, they, they don't have a real time experience of knowledge. So I'll slowly come to that point. OK, I'll slowly come to that point. OK, but whatever you're doing, Gaurav, that's exactly how it should be done in the real world as well. But I'm not done yet. OK, I'm not done yet. I'll come to that point. OK, so Gaurav, just hold your horses. OK. Yes, Salman. OK, Salman, I hope you're following. OK. <clears throat> And most of the people you have done load runner, you have attended my load runner class and all that. You might be wondering, J meter, how do I create a scenario? This is exactly like a scenario now, guys. Okay, this is your scenario with three scripts, and each script contains multiple controllers in which it has its own this thing. Okay, now, now, okay. So these are dummy dummy scripts, guys. So let me remove these dummy scripts. Okay, now I have this thread group, okay, which is by fish. Wonderful, guys. Wonderful. Now, now, okay, now let me go ahead. Okay, now we understood the significance of the simple controller. All good, all good. Okay, now I'll go ahead and execute to see like, you know, how the results will be. So if I wanted to look at the results and if you want to look at the uh, response times, what is the, what is that I need to add? Okay, so now I am executing it. If I execute, it will not capture the response times for sure, the view results tree. So what is that I have to add to, to look at the response times? I want to hear from all of you, okay? I want to look at from all of you guys. I want to hear from all of you, okay? If I want to look at the response times, immediately tell me what is that you want. My speakers are up as well. Listeners, which listeners I wanted to add, okay? Which listener I want to ask, wonderful, okay? Okay, if you want, I will show the listeners to you. Quickly tell me, okay? I want to look at the 90 percentile time. View results tree does not give you the response time, Sunil. So uh, what is that? I want to look at the response times. Quickly tell me, guys. Aggregate report, wonderful. Okay. And what else I want? Okay. If, there is, if I wanted to select another listener, what is that other listener I can have? Aggregate report or summary report. Okay. Or one more, one more listener that I can add is view results in the table. View results in the table. Okay. So these three... Uh, the, View, where is my view results? Oh, okay, it has added over here. Hang on. Okay. So you have to add it on the thread group level. You see, this is the thread group. You have to add it on the thread group level so that it is, it is applicable to all the controllers. Okay. So that is good. Okay. Now all these listen, all these listeners three summary report view results in the table aggregate aggregate and view results tree. I have added it in the thread group level or you can add it in the test plan level. You see, this one is added in the test plan level. Okay, you see this view results tree is added in the test plan level, but three these three listeners are added in the thread group level. Both are fine, but if you wanted to add it in the test plan level also, you can add it. Okay, so which means that okay. Now you see all these four listeners are added in the test plan level. It is okay if you can add it on the thread group level also. It is fine. It's going to show you the results. But typically, it's a good practice to add it in the test plan. Okay, so <clears throat> now let me go ahead and execute quickly. So, if I want to look at the response times, you can look it up in the view results tree. View results in the table or aggregate report or summary report. So, it doesn't matter. Okay, let me save it. It's just asking me to save it. Okay, so. <clears throat> 
Now, now I have run it for only one iteration. Watch carefully. Okay. Now, launch thirty. What is the response times, guys? Launch thirty. What is the response times? Okay, three forty. What is this three forty? We already know it is milliseconds. Three forty milliseconds means point three seconds. Launch thirty one one centimeter. Now you tell me if somebody has asked you what is the response times for launch transaction? What is the response times for launch transaction? Option you got one, you will give three forty. Option you option two, you will give one seventy three. Option three, you will add both of it and give you which is like three seven plus four is eleven. So five. 530 this will come to 7 5533 so you will give 533 or 340 or 173 option 1 340 option 2 173 option 3 5 533 which one you will give okay option 3 we will give but the report the report itself is not giving so wouldn't it be good if my report if you go to the summary report also it is giving me separately you see 30 31 and all that if you go to the aggregate report also so it is it is giving me separately for these two samples okay but i want something which gives me addition of these two addition of these two okay so what would i do what would i do okay so to to solve this problem to solve this problem the jmeter folks has given me an option okay is given me an option which is what the solution for this is what adding something called a transaction controller adding something called a transaction controller so i'll move these two samplers i'll move these two samplers into this transaction controller i'll move these two samplers into this transaction controller now you see i'll name this transaction controller appropriately which is launch okay now what happened these two samplers which actually represents one single transaction is moved into simple controller no transaction Transaction controller, wonderful. Okay, now I'll create one more transaction controller. Okay, one more transaction controller. This time around, I move these two samplers which belongs to login inside this. Okay, inside this, and then I'll name this as login. I'll name this as login. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay. Similarly, you can do it for click on fish as well. So let me uh, let me create one more sample uh, transaction controller and then okay, move these two samplers into this transaction controller and then name this transaction controller appropriately, which is click on fish. Click on fish. Okay. So there are no other transaction controllers which has multiple samplers. So again, if you have a simple uh, only okay, these two represents one of them. So you can, probably you can have one more transaction. controller and even though you have only one samplers you can put a transaction controller and put this one sampler i've seen people doing it okay so <clears throat> okay okay and then even though this checkout is there even though it is only one sample okay just to make the make this make the script look consistent okay so make the script look consistent you can create a transaction controller for that and then put it okay so here is there any value addition for this particular transaction controller to be honest no but since we have organized everything in, uh, in in this simple controller we have organized everything in a transaction controllers you can put it this way okay but to be honest this particular transaction controller is not doing much help other than just you know moving this sampler into this particular transaction controller so since we have organized in this way so you can have all the uh, transaction controllers even though there is one sampler or more than one samplers you can create the transaction controllers and move it in, inside so that so that it looks organized looks organized okay now you see what will happen into this aggregate report or summary report or other reports okay watch carefully guys watch carefully now now <clears throat> i'll go ahead and run it go ahead and run it okay now you see <clears throat> watch carefully here the aggregate report or view results in a table any of them okay i'll be looking in the view results in the table okay view results in the table and you see So this is 321. This is 168. But overall response times it is giving, which is 
489. Okay, 489. So you see, you add all of it, it should closely come to the same thing. You see, 8 plus 1, 9, 6 plus 2, 8, 4, 3 plus 4, 4, 489. Sometimes it will be little more as well, which I've seen, maybe because of you know uh, execution or whatever it is, but do understand this is in milliseconds. Okay, so there will be a little bit difference, it is okay. Now you see, it is giving the response times on the samplers level and it is giving the response level, response times on the transaction level as well. This is what you can project it to your, project it to your client. And here if the response times is high, then you can break it down to see which sampler is taking more time. Okay, more time. Similarly, login, these two are on the samplers level and overall login, overall login it should give you, right? Not sure why it is giving, but not sure why it is not giving. Is this simple controller, transaction controller only? Okay, so it is supposed to give you that. Aggregate report launch. Okay, it is given the response times for. Oh, okay, one thing. Login 32. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Okay, so you see login 32, login 33 never got executed. So overall response times for login also it says given, which is 3. So here the 33 will not actually you know execute it internally. So that's the reason why it is not showing the response times for that. So the sampler response time itself is the transaction response times. So click on fish 173, 189, overall it has given 362. Add to cart 195, 182, overall it has given 377. Okay, now you see the transaction controller is adding some functionality. What functionality is adding? It is doing some favor to us other than just grouping. <coughs> it is giving some favor to us. What it is doing? It is adding the response times for all the samplers and showing it as one. Showing it as one. Okay, now this looks more to a real life. What would be a real life script would look like? This is what a more like a real life script would look like. Okay, a simple controller having transaction controllers inside it. And why do we add the transaction controllers? So that it gives you the response times on the transaction level, not just on the sampler level. Are we clear, guys, all of you? So, Gaurav, Gaurav, is this clear? Maybe this is what your script would look like. Probably you wouldn't use the simple controllers. You just went ahead and used the transaction controllers, I believe. Okay, so Gaurav got there. But what I have done? have grouped them into a nice way wherein your script is close to the load runner script kind of okay but you can you if you don't want to use this uh, simple controllers for grouping the launch for login and all that it's up to you nobody is asking you okay then you can just put the transaction controllers and put the relevant transactions inside it but people have seen them grouping it like this okay but if you don't like this grouping okay just group it only on the transaction level Okay, only for the samplers on for the different transactions you can group it so that you know you would you don't have these three uh, groupings you would have the groupings on the transaction level. Again, how you organize your script is your duty. Okay, nobody can come and tell you that this is the right way. Okay, if you think that this is better, what I have shown you, you can go with it. But if you think that whatever you are doing is that's better, you can go ahead and do that. Okay, Gaurav. Okay. That's what. But this is what I prefer. Okay. If I am a manager, a test manager, I would have the people to follow this kind of standards. Okay. <clears throat> One. Okay. Now, Kumar. Okay. <clears throat> In my report, I don't wanted to see this sampler level response times, which is of no value to me. Let's assume. Okay. That's what you are saying. I don't. I don't care like what each. Uh, uh, what do you say? Each sampler is giving. I want the overall response times for the uh, for the for the whole uh, transaction. I don't want what it is for the sampler. I don't care. I just want it for the for the transaction itself. Okay? Is there a way? Yes. Is there a way? You just say generate parent sample. What do you say? Generate parent sample. Now you see. I'll do it for all of them. Generate parent sample. This is of no use, so let me delete that. Okay. Now you see. Okay. So what did I say? Generate parent sample. Now you save it. Okay. Clear all the existing reports. So I've cleared all the reports. If I don't clear it, it will append to the existing report. Okay. The re report will be there and it will append to that existing report. So I didn't want it to do that. So I cleared all of it. Now you go ahead and run it. Guys, go ahead and run it. Um, this is just append to this. Okay, now you see 
<coughs> launch has two samplers. It is not giving the response times for launch. Okay, so uh, launch one, launch two. Overall launch it has given. Okay, view results in the table if you see. Okay, earlier it has given what was the response times for uh, what was that launch 30 and launch 31 it has given separately and overall launch it has given but now you see launch 30 launch 31 it is not captured overall launch it has captured similarly earlier it has given the response times for login 32 okay no click on fish for 34 and click on fish 34 35 34 and 35 it has given the response times but now it is just giving the response times only for on the transaction level which is click to accomplish. If you don't want it or the sampler level, you want only the parent uh, parent level, generate the parent sample and you'll get the response times for only, only that, not the sample guys. Usually I'll go with it because all my clients prefer the response times on the transaction level, not on the sample level. Okay, but in case, in case, okay, if the response times on the uh, transaction levels are very high, then the response times of these samplers will be uh, handy. You see which sampler is actually causing the high response times. You can, uh, for further analysis, it will be useful. But for submitting the report, okay, you wanted to give it on the transaction level, guys. Okay, nobody wants to look it on the sampler levels and the transaction levels. They get confused. So that's the reason why I've seen a lot of people doing this generate a parent sample. Generate a parent sample. Okay, are we clear so far, guys, all of you? This is what a real like close close to the real life script looks like. Uh, the other than think times, everything else is there. Assertions and think times needs to be there. Otherwise, this is very close to the real world script. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So let me take a break, guys. Let me take a break of ten minutes. Okay. Today I'm not keeping that well, to be honest. Okay. Um, and then after the break, when I come back, we'll talk about the other controllers. There are a lot of controllers which are there. So we'll go through and try to wrap up as many controllers as possible today. But these are the generally used controllers, simple and uh, transaction controllers, simple controllers. But there are loop controllers, there are uh, throughput controllers, there are quite a one of them. Okay, so <clears throat> thanks Osman. So let me take a break of 10 minutes, come back and then expect the class to go a little longer. Uh, I'll try to complete as many controllers as possible. Okay, wonderful guys.
So guys, are you there? All of you? Everybody out there? Okay. Thank you guys. Sorry for the bigger break. Okay. So <clears throat> now let's get started, guys. So before the break, uh, okay. Thank you, guys. So before the break, we were looking at this uh, transaction controllers and the value addition of these transaction controllers. And also, you can use this feature to generate only the response times for the pairing sampler, which is the overall response times for that particular transaction. You can do that. Okay. And <clears throat> one more thing, guys. Okay. So before I talk about the next controllers, so let me talk about a beautiful feature of this JMeter. Already you would have paid notice or paid attention to it or noticed it, but I would wanted to tell you as to what it is. Okay. So now you see for these samplers, let's look at the what are the headers are there. How many headers are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. Approximately six headers are there. Okay. And then for this sampler over here, okay, you look at probably how many samplers are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. And if you pay attention, okay, accept language. What is the accept language here? Gzip. What is the accept language is there? Accept language English is there. Okay, so you see accept, accept language English. Upgrade insecure request one is there. Okay, upgrade insecure request one is there. Okay, so <clears throat> like this. Okay, um, let's assume that for for whatever the reason, let's assume that both these headers are same. Okay, for this sampler, what all the headers are there, which is six of them, and those six headers are same as these headers. Let's assume. Okay, I'm sure it will be. Let's assume as well, you know, in case if there will be any difference, there will be difference in one or two headers. But just for our discussion purposes, just to explain you a certain concept. Okay, let's assume all these headers, six headers are exactly similar to these six headers. Okay, so instead of putting this, you see these headers are under this uh, particular sampler, which means that these headers, these headers are only applicable to this sampler. And these headers are only applicable to this sampler because because this is under this particular sampler or it is there on the sampler level. So it is applicable to only this header. So had I put this header, okay, watch carefully. I'm doing a control X and then a control V. Okay. If I put this header on this transaction level or on this transaction controller level, you see this transaction controller level, I put this header. Okay. Okay, I've put this header. Now you see for these two samples, now you see this header is there on this transaction level, on this transaction controller level. So option one, this header is applicable to this transaction controller. Okay, option two, this header is actually applicable to only this, only this law 30 sampler or option three. Okay, this, this, this particular headers are applicable to only this particular 31 sampler. Option four, this header is applicable to both this 31 and 32. Okay, which option would you go with? Option one or two or three or four. Okay, one is for this transaction level, two is only for 30, three is for 31, four is for both 31 and 32. Four. It's not a big guess, guys. This header manager now is applicable to both these samples. Both these samples. Okay, if I put this, had I put this, okay. Had I put this header, had I put this header on this simple controller level, okay. Now you see this simple controller called login, okay, has a header and then two transaction controllers. Now you tell me this particular header is applicable to both these transaction controllers, which means that it is applicable to this sampler 30, 31, and then 32, 33. This header is applicable to both this, all these four samplers, which is 30, 31, 32, 33. Because it is there on this particular transaction controller level. It is, it is, this header is added on this particular simple controller level. So it is applicable to all the samplers which is there here. If I added this header on this sampler, on this thread group level, on this thread group level, okay, you see this, this, this header manager is there on this thread group level. Okay, you, if you want, you can move it up or you can keep it down. It doesn't matter. Okay, just to visually to make it look, I'm moving it up. So now this header, uh, this, uh, sorry, header manager or this headers are there on the thread group level, which means that it is applicable to every single sampler which is out here. Okay, how many other samplers are there? The, sam the, the header will be applicable to all of them. The header will be applicable to all this login, uh, confirm, payment, 
check out, add to cart these two samplers, click on fish these three two samplers, log in these two samplers, log out, launch these two samplers. For all these samplers, this header manager is applicable. Okay, so <clears throat> or you can put this header manager okay on this on this test plan level. Okay, move up, which means that if there are multiple thread groups, it, this header manager is applicable to all the thread groups as well. But in this test plan, there is only one thread group. So this header manager is applicable to only this thread group, which means that it is applicable to all these simple controllers, which means that it is applicable to all these transaction controllers, which means that it is applicable to all these samplers. All these samplers. So whatever you see now, you see cookie manager, whatever the cookie manager that you're seeing, this is applicable to every simple every single sampler which is over here this http request defaults whatever you're putting here this is applicable to every single trans, uh, sampler this user defined variables i'll tell you at the later point of time what is this variables so these variables that you declare here with you can use it into every single sampler here okay so now you got a feel for guys all of you understood understood all of you got the clarity okay so that's how that's how these things are. Okay, I'm asking you all of you guys. Okay, got the clarity? So it's only two to three S's. There are only three S's. Okay. Okay. Athena, Dejanu, Diva, Gaurav, Geta Blue, Gautam, Hagos, Hivi, Meriatu, Namrata, Narendra, Osman, Raghu, Sase, Salman, Shapora, Scott, and Tens. Okay. I hope for all of you. So you mean that the header has to be under the test plan level. There is nothing like that. I'm not meaning anything, but I'm just telling you how the G meter works. If you think that there is a header, there are certain headers which needs to be applicable to every single sampler out there under the test plan. Then instead of adding it to every single sampler, you can add it under the test plan level or thread group level so that they're applicable to every single sampler. It totally depends upon how the script is data. Okay, so if there are these six headers which needs to be applicable to every single sampler, instead of adding it to every single sampler, you can add it on the thread group level so that it is applicable to all of them. But for every single sampler, the, the headers are different. Then there is no point adding it over here. So you can add it to the sampler level. Okay, but if there are certain headers, okay, which are common to all of them, Instead of you adding it to every single sampler, you can add it over here. That's what I'm telling you. Guys. Okay, I'm not telling you that it has to be under the test plan level, but I'm telling you how the JMeter actually works. But it's up to you how to use it. But for example, every single sampler has a different headers. Then why would you add it on the test plan level? You add it on the sampler. Level. Does it make sense, Dejanu? Wonderful, Raghu. That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay, so you don't move anything. Okay, if the, if the second recording is there, you know, just leave it as it is because it's got recorded. But I'm telling you the power of the tool. In case you are building these samplers manually, or maybe you have recorded it in a bad boy or a Chrome plugin or something like that, and imported the script, and by default the headers are not copied or generated, and you figured out that for all the samplers the headers are same. So instead of adding it to each sampler, you just add it on the thread group level or the test plan level so that it is applicable to all the samplers. Okay, but something is recorded, you don't want it to touch it. Okay, just leave it as it is. If it works fine, just leave it as it is. Don't even touch it. But when you import the scripts from others like Fiddler or something, the headers might not copy or might not be generated automatically. And in case if the script is failing because of certain headers or you realize that the certain headers needs to be added for all the samplers and the, all these headers are same, then you add it on the thread group level, not on each sampler level. But if you realize that each sampler has a different headers and you have to add it, then you have to add it on the sampler. Okay, this is what I'm, I'm just telling you the power of the tool. That's it. How you wanted to use it, it's up to you. Okay, depending on the need, you will use it. Okay, so I think I have answered these two questions what Raghu and Dejanu has posted. Okay, it's clear for you, both of you. Dejanu said, Okay, Raghu, is it clear for you? Kumar? Yeah. yeah. I have one question. Yeah. 
uh, if I need to find how much time to take uh, for a transactions, just consider example previous one that is one trade group you are consider for a buy fish and another uh, trade group you consider a buy dog. Okay, I want to check uh, the individual uh, transaction time out. So how can you determine how much time to need to complete for a one transactions? One transaction or one sampler you are asking? One transactions. So, you, uh, okay, let me repeat the question to understand if, you know, to, to see if I understood your question correctly. What you're saying is, I wanted, I wanted the response times for launch, not 30 and 31. That's what you're asking? I haven't, uh, I haven't regarding talk to a thread group level. That is a one thread group you are considered by fish. Okay. Okay, I wanted the response times for the complete script you're saying. Yeah. So okay. how can you check the with the respect? Tell me now. You should be able to tell me now. Now you see overall script execution time. Okay, script execution time is what I'll name this transaction and move all these simple controllers inside it. Right now, don't you think it will give me the response times for the whole script? Okay, let's do that. Let's let's see that. Did you understood what? At least did you understood what I did? Yeah. Okay, now you see the complete script, how much time it has taken? Let me see view results in the table. How much time it has taken? Three seconds. Did you get that? Yeah. yeah. I, th I thought, I mean, these are the things you should have told me. I mean, I'm surprised you have asked. I'm giving you the power of the tool. How you want to use it, you use it. Simple, you create one transaction controller and move the complete script into it so that it, it captures the whole response times. Okay, well, look, good question though, okay. So uh, now, I mean, more questions you ask, you know, the clarity, more clarity you'll get. It. Okay, wonderful. <clears throat> Abhijit, did I answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so beautiful, guys. Now, there is only one thing about this transaction controllers. There is one thing which I've missed, which is include the duration of primers and pre post process in the generated sample. If I wanted to explain, again, I have to explain timers and pre and post processors, which I will do at the later point of time. But once I explain about timers and P processors, you can play around with this one, honestly, guys. Okay, but at that point of time, if I remember, definitely I'll cover this option. With this, the transaction controllers are covered, guys. Okay, the transaction controllers are covered. Okay, you see, transaction controller merges the response times for all samplers under it. Okay, transaction controller is considered successful only if all the samplers under this is successful. Okay, so this is one important thing, guys. So if these two samplers are there under this transaction controller, if one of them fail, then the transaction controller fails. Okay, that's how it is. Okay, transaction controller can function in the parent mode. When I said parent mode, this is what is the parent mode. If you click on it, it will control in the, it will work in the parent mode, which means that it will not capture the response times of these two samplers individually. Okay, in the parent mode, the individual samplers can still be upheld in the view results script, but no, no longer appear the entries in the view results in the table or listeners. Okay, so view results tree, you will be still be able to see it. Okay, so view results in the tree, you will be still be able to see it. You see, you can see what is the request response for this 30 and 31, you'll be able to see it. But view results in the table, you will not be able to see it. Both launch 30, 31, you are not able to see as separate entries. Okay. You see, by default, transaction controller does not include the time taken by the uh, process. I am going to talk about this at a later point of time. Okay. Wonderful, guys. So I've covered all of it. Now, now we'll go into the loop controllers, guys. You see, the loop controllers, it's not just grouping, but it gives you the additional functionality, additional power. Let's see what is that additional power we will get out of it. Okay. Okay, wonderful guys. Now you see, okay, so this, this login is a simple controller. Purchase fish is a simple controller. Logout is a simple controller. Okay. Now in this script, in this script, buy a fish. Okay, buy a fish script. In this script, okay, what do you have? You have three simple controllers. One is login. Okay, one is purchase, purchase a fish. And third one is logout. 
third one is lockout. Okay, so these are the simple controllers you have. Now, for whatever the reason, let's say you wanted to execute this for once, you have to execute only this for once. Okay, so you have to execute only for once. And purchase fish, let's say you wanted to execute it for 10 times. Okay, and then not 10 times, let's say five times. Okay, to make this simple life easy for me. And then this one you want to execute for once. Okay, log in once, purchase a fish five, log out once. Okay, so this is how your requirement is. Let's assume. Okay, that's what is your requirement. Now let's go, let's understand this requirement and let's fulfill this requirement. Login only once. Okay, so overall you are running it for with one user and how many times you are running once, which means that okay, overall there is only one thread and how many loop count you are executing once. So which means that login will be executed once, purchase fish will be executed once, logout will be executed once. But what I, what I need, purchase fish needs to be executed five times. If I change this to five times, if I change this to five times, now what will happen? Login how many times it will be executed, guys? Quickly answer it. Login how many times it will be executed? Five times. All of you, I want answers from all of you. Be attentive, guys. Purchase fish five times, log out five times. But what is the requirement? Login only once. Am I fulfilling this requirement? No. If I change this to five, login, purchase fish, log out, everything will be executed five times, which I am not fulfilling this requirement. Login needs to be once. Okay. Login needs to be once, purchase five times, log out five times. So if I change this here five times, if I change this here five times, it's that is not my requirement. My requirement is not fulfilled. So something else needs to be done. So you have to keep this as one so that all of them will be executed once, once. But this needs to be executed five times. So what do I do? Change this with the loop controller. So what do I use? What do I use? Loop controller. Okay. So recently one of this, uh, I mean, one of the interviewer has asked this question. Okay. So there is certain functionality which I have wanted to execute. Okay. 10 times, but others needs to execute only once. How do you manage this? Okay. This was, this was what exactly asked in the interview. There was certain functionality. He didn't say what it was, which needs to be executed more times. Let's say five times than the other functionality. Let's say one times. This is the question he has asked. So certain functionality is executed more times. Other functionality needs to be executed less times. This was the question which was asked. So how do we use, how do we do it? By using something called loop controller. Now this simple controller needs to be replaced by what? Needs to be replaced by what? You see, change the controller, change the controller to loop controller. Now what? Now it was a simple controller, now changed it to loop controller. How did I do it? Right click on it. Change the controller, change the controller. You can change it to again, simple controller if you want. Now again, this became a simple controller. But now I wanted to change it to what? Loop controller, okay? Change it to what? Loop controller. And how many times I need to execute? Five times. How many times I need to execute? Five times. This is a simple controller. By default, it will be executed once. This is the loop controller, okay? The name I have given is as purchase a fish. How many times it will be executed? Five times. Log out, how many times it will be executed? Once. Okay, let's clear all the existing uh, results. Now let me go ahead and execute this, okay? Okay. Now watch carefully, guys. Watch carefully. If there is any failures, ignore it, guys. There is something called correlation that needs to be done. So obviously we didn't come to that part. So I haven't done the correlation. So expect that some something uh, some samplers will be failures. So that's what has happened. So ignore them. We need to fix the script so that it passes. But we will do that at the later point of time. Now let's concentrate only on understanding the loop controller. So in login, in login, how many uh, how many uh, 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 transactions are there? Launch and login. Launch and login has had done. So this has executed only once. If you see, this has executed only once. Then what happened? It went into purchase fish and executed these five samplers, which is click on fish, add to cart, check out, payment, and confirm. Okay. Of once this is done, we expect that the logout will be executed. We expect that the logout will be executed. Something got messed up in the logout test. Some samplers got deleted, maybe. Logout, it has three samplers or something like that. Okay, something got messed up here, guys. Logout. Okay, so fine, not an issue, not an issue. Okay, so now you see logout. Uh, I mean, all this got executed. Then we expect that again, 
uh, again this is executed five times, which is accomplish add to cart payment, payment details confirm. This is the second iteration. This will be the third iteration. This is the fourth iteration, and this is the fifth iteration. Okay, this is the fifth iteration. If logouts, do you see this is disabled? If it is enabled, then logout would have been executed. Let me enable it forcefully. Enable this, guys. Okay, I'm sure this is a 340 request or something. Anyways, so if logout would have been there, logout will be executed eventually. To uh, to to demonstrate that again, let me <coughs> let me run it again. At a later point of time, we will fix that, guys. Okay. So maybe at the checkout, something got happened. You see, till here, five times it's executed. You see, these two are executed only once. Click fish to confirm first iteration. Click fish to confirm second iteration. Click fish to confirm third iteration. Click fish to confirm fourth iteration. Click fish to confirm fifth iteration. After five iterations is done, then log out. Okay. This is how you can accomplish. Okay. And this is how it will work if you add the loop. If you add the loop controllers okay wonderful guys so understood how the loop controller works all of you any questions okay so what will happen if i put infinite guess what will happen if i put infinite obviously obviously it will run for infinite number of times there is no there is no stop stopping it okay it will run forever so if you want to really look at it we can do that as well Okay, come on, guys. This is okay. I need to delete this. I think this is the problem. Yeah, now it will not ask. Okay, you see, this will be executed only once, but whatever you see here, click fish to confirm, click fish to confirm. This will be executed forever. This will be executed forever. Okay, so now what do I do to stop this, guys? What do I do to? stop this script okay by the way you design the script is the script by itself will not stop so what do i do now okay to stop it so people can unmute themselves and speak okay so you can press on okay what do you recommend should i press on the stop button or should i press on the shutdown what do you recommend option one stop option two shut down what would you recommend okay by default typically shutdown is better because the users will get done with the work whatever they're doing come to the logical ending of it you see it has completed whatever the add to cart it is doing it has completed that and it has stopped if you say stop even though it is in the middle of it it will just stop abruptly so that's not it's it's not good it's, it's just so check wonderful yes wonderful okay now now instead of infinite let's say let me see if i accept negative numbers if i put negative numbers what do you think will happen it is not accepting the negative numbers but i think uh, okay so it's not accepting negative numbers you see if i put minus one and you save it automatically it's taking infinite if i put positive numbers then it is taking okay okay no issues so this is what is the functionality of the loop controller guys it is pretty simple okay now let's look at the runtime controller okay so you see the runtime controller controls the duration for which the child elements are run so let's look at what is this child elements what else that it contains and all that okay Okay, so now now what I will do is <clears throat> I'll replace this loop controller with a runtime controller guys so that you understand. Okay. See runtime controller. And here you need to tell how long you want it to execute. How long you want it to execute. Let's say I say I I execute for maybe 10 seconds. Okay, not 10 seconds. Let's let's keep it as five seconds. I execute this for five seconds. Okay. And uh, there is one more thing I am doing, guys. For now, just ignore it. 
just ignore it okay so i'm adding something called timers which will work as a think time okay i'm adding a timer of 500 milliseconds which is 0.5 seconds so i'm just adding that timer just ignore that at this current point of time okay because i haven't spoken about think time or timers but just to make this functionality work in a way i wanted i i am adding that timers guys okay but at the later point of time when we come to the chapter for timers we'll discuss in detail how these timers will actually work okay but for now just for just the way i wanted it to work i have to add the timer so that's why i'm adding the timers timers means it will add 500 seconds okay so between these two samples it will add 500 seconds between these two so 500 this two 500 so that's how it works because you have added it on the uh, on the uh, runtime controller level which means that it is applicable to all the transactions so between these two actually honestly between these two it will wait for uh, 500 seconds between these two it will wait for 500 seconds between these two it will wait for 500 seconds between these two it will wait for 500 seconds so that's how the constant timer works at the later point of time we will discuss in detail okay for now just totally ignore that okay so ignore that there is something called time okay now you see <coughs> You have given, let's say, 10 seconds, guys. Five seconds is way too less, much time, less time. Let's give 10 seconds. Okay. Now you look at what what is actually happening, and then okay, uh, let's understand what is happening. So what did you do? You put something called instead of loop timers, you put something called runtime timers. And how much time you have given? 10 seconds. Let's see what happens. Okay. Let's see what happens. Okay. You also keep keep an eye on this time, guys. Keep an eye on this time for 10 seconds. What will happen? Okay, now you see the time has started, which is one second. Okay, now, okay, you have to look at when this loop controller has started, or this sorry, a runtime controller has started, and you see exactly of 10 minutes, it will execute how much ever it is there for 10 minutes, and then it will come out of it. Okay, now let's look at it. Launch login has executed, which is part of the login simple controller. Then this purchase a fish which is a runtime controller started executing. Okay, then it has executed click on fish, add to cart, check out payment details and confirm all these samplers it has executed. Then again, you know, the 10 seconds was not done. So you put what 10 seconds. So the 10 seconds was not done. So it is trying to execute loop through again. It started executing click on fish, add to cart, check out payment details, confirm. Okay, confirm. Then, then the 10 seconds are done and then exactly then it has then it has executed logout. So for whatever the time that you have put for that time, for that time, it will execute whatever the samplers which are there inside that controller, it will execute for that amount of time. Here, what happened? Exactly two iterations it has completed. One is click fish to uh, confirm, click fish to confirm, two iterations it has executed completely and came out of it. These two iterations it could execute in this 10 seconds. So it has executed that and came out of it. Understood guys? Understood? Any questions on that frame? Narendra, I will share the material. Don't worry about it. Uh, so guys, how many of you understood this? Kumar. Uh, can you comment the constant timer on run? Why? Because right in runtime, uh, in runtime controller, we are already mentioned at 10 seconds, right? So irrespective of the timer, it needs to run uh, 10 seconds, right? Whether the waiting time is there or not. Uh, so then, then what's the use of uh, to mention the you no know, uh, runtime time like around some 10 seconds? If obviously if we keep uh, any constant timer, uh, there itself it will hold, right? But generally, in uh, in rest of the uh, samplers, right, the repetition won't happen generally, right? So here, what's the exact use? Where in real time this can? No, we can use in real time or. Uh... So this time, whatever you are giving, is nothing to do with the timer. To be honest, timer is between these samplers, the waiting time. If I don't put it, the, the execution happens so fast and a lot of iterations would happen in this 10 seconds. That's what I have it, and I have uh, uh, added this timer. So let me delete it. Okay, so that you understand the exact functionality of this particular runtime. Time. Okay, runtime timer 10 seconds have given. Now look at look at what what will happen. So watch this self stream exactly understand what will happen. Now you see this will execute only once launch and login. Okay, but whatever is there in this in this runtime controller in this 10 seconds whatever it can execute it will execute 
let's let's suppose in this 10 seconds it has executed all of them then it will go back and execute again so again it could execute all of them let's say to executing all these samplers it has taken only two seconds so it will execute this one then it will go back and execute all of them which max four seconds but you said you wanted to execute it for 10 seconds then you it will go ahead and execute again and again and again so five times it will execute so that it will make up to this 10 seconds okay so that's how this timer means whatever is there inside this that much time it will execute in this 10 seconds now now answer this question yes or no guys all of you in this 10 seconds it can execute only these three of them now option one it will execute only these three of them option two since it has started this controller it will execute all the five of them now can you answer option one or option two okay so what i'm saying is in this 10 seconds it could execute only these three of them so will it execute these three of them or it will execute all of them which is option two I want to hear from all of you. There are 19 students who are listening, guys. Please. Okay. Logically, we think that it should execute all of them, but honestly, it will execute only these three of them because you said it's 10 seconds. Okay. So watch carefully what is happening. Okay. Watch carefully what is happening. Okay. Let's look at this runtime view. Launch login, however, it will execute. Now it has started executing. So you see, it has started the time at four seconds. It has started this click on fish so it has executed the click click on fish so it has executed this one then then there was more time because you give 10 seconds there are more time it has executed this and then again it has executed this again it has executed this again it has executed this okay again it has executed see how many controllers so it came to i mean it came to the logical ending of this one and completed but to be honest if 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 it is halfway through it will run only halfway through and then it will stop okay to to do that to demonstrate that i'll add some timer here okay i'll add probably let's say uh, two seconds okay i'll say not two seconds uh, i'll say okay um, what i will do is i'll decrease this to uh, three seconds okay runtime viewer and let's say uh, yeah two seconds is what the time i mean waiting time okay now what happens after executing this it will wait for two seconds before it executes this so it will consume all the time so and here your runtime viewer you have given only three seconds let's see what happens okay login launch however it has it, it gets executed now you see it will wait for two seconds before it can execute click on fish it has no time to execute anything else so it didn't execute anything in this particular thing so let me increase this to 10 seconds okay hang on now look at it guys carefully launch login it has executed then to execute this click on fish first it has to wait for two seconds so it will wait for two seconds okay now it, it will it will it will run click on fish okay then uh, then it will wait for two seconds. It will it, it has executed what? Uh, add to cart. So it has executed click on fish. It has executed add to cart. Now whatever the time that you have given 10 seconds is consumed. Okay. Only by executing these two samplers. Whatever the time that you have given which is 10 seconds has been consumed. Then it doesn't have any more time to execute the remaining samplers which is uh, check out payment details confirm so it has not executed any of them check out payment details confirm and skip and went to log out. skip and went to log out. did you understood how this runtime controller is working guys did you understood how this runtime controller is working all of you it has time to this 10 seconds whatever you have given uh, it, it has time to execute only these two samplers so it has executed only these two samplers and it skipped all the others because whatever the 10 seconds that you have given if the, all the 10 seconds is consumed just for executing these two samplers so the remaining samplers will not be executed because the, you have run out of time and then it went ahead and executed the other pieces of code and understood how it works guys the runtime controller understood how it works so narendra now i think you got the clarity it has nothing to whatever the time that you have given here it has nothing to do with the waiting time think time don't link it to the think time waiting time nothing to do with here you are telling that how much time you giving to from these samples okay so before even running all the samples the time has run out it will stop then and there itself and execute the other piece of code 
okay or if it has more time it has executed all of them and it has more time then it will go back and start from again okay start from again. and it has more time again it will execute it will loop through maybe any number of times until you have time until you have time not i mean real time i don't know honestly where you use it guys maybe for the data setup maybe something like that you can do it okay so or you know overnight you are running running a data setup scripts or something and you say that oh let it run for three to four hours okay you are going for a tea or maybe there are three to four hours before which you have to run an actual load test so let me let me run the data setup scripts in that meantime so for four hours you wanted to run the data setup scripts you put the runtime controller for four hours or five hours or whatever the time and you run the data setup scripts you don't care how many times it runs but you wanted to run it for exactly four hours because after four hours some other activity might happen the the servers may go down or whatever could happen okay so you're you're not sure about how many iterations but you're sure about the timing okay let me run this data setup scripts for three hours okay because after three hours maybe some other team is doing something else on the environment or you don't want it to disturb the environment after three hours or you yourself wanted to start an actual load test after three hours so you have exactly three hours to run your data setup scripts. So maybe you can run, you can kickstart and put this uh, controller and run for three hours. So that for three hours it continues to run, irrespective of number of iterations. Thousand iterations may run or hundred iterations may run. Maybe in that kind of scenario you might use this runtime controller. But honestly, in the real world, where exactly you will use? I'm I'm not able to. I'm not able to visualize or I'm not able to think about it. The only scenario I'm able to think about is this time, whatever I've told you just now. Okay, so a lot of people have left for today and we are already overrun by 30 minutes. So we'll stop here. So we have, con we have covered the loop controller, runtime controller, simple controller and transaction controllers guys. There are other good number of controllers which are there. We will cover those controllers tomorrow and try to wrap up all the controllers tomorrow. So day after tomorrow, we'll start with the times. And there are very important topics like, you know, geometer uh, functions and hierarchy. So uh, I'll try to see if, if I can merge those things with these controllers or maybe after these timers and assertions are done, I'll start with those particular uh, things called hierarchy and as well as the uh, um, timers. Okay, so wonderful guys. So any questions? Okay. People, you are not doing the assignments. Please do the assignments so that you get complete clarity. Again, I'm telling you guys, if when I speak to you, it might look very, very simple. But when you are doing it, so it becomes really difficult. Okay, I think enough. You need help. I'll stay back. Okay, what about others, guys? Any questions, doubts? Here is the time to ask, guys. Okay, so I think enough. I'll make you as a presenter. Again, I'm asking you guys before I look into Akinaf issues. Uh, I wanted to ask you if you have any questions. Okay, you can ask. Okay, Akinaf, you are the presenter. Yeah. Yeah. You are the presenter. Show the screen to us. Okay. Out of again, you know, I'm already putting it in the class. So again, you want me to email it? Okay, I'll try to email it. But today there is no assignments, so going forward I'll try to email you again. Okay, I was expect that you, if you are if you are attentive in the class, you note it down, right? Okay, so that's what I was expecting. But again, you know, I'll put it in the in the, in the notes as well. Okay. I think I've, yeah. Now you are the presenter. You can speak as well and tell me what is the issue. Uh, so I have everything. Uh. When I set up the my uh, proxy, the uh, JPH store it doesn't work. It says no internet. Okay. When I recur. <clears throat> uh, let me show you here. Okay. Try to build it from the template. Can you see? Don't add it. Try to build it from the template. No, don't do that. I've already told you what is the right oh. way of doing it. Go from the template. Uh, okay. Okay. So on the top from the left hand corner, second button. Keep going up. Yeah, second button. Second one. That's the first one. The second one. No, no, no. Yeah. No. On to the right. On to the right. On to the right. The right? Yeah. 
Oh, which one? Oh my God. On to the right, buddy. You've already been there. Second button is what I'm saying. The second button. Oh, no, no, my left. Yeah. yeah. Do you mean edit or search? Search. It's not a search. Click on that. Okay. Wherever your arrow is, click on that. I did. Can you see? Okay. Now go ahead and pick up the recording templates. No, 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 don't minimize. In the open templates, pick up the recording template. Oh my god. It says, it says yeah, on the, pick up the recording template. Okay, let me take the controls. So you, ah, okay. you should be attentive in the class. Okay, I've already shown you. Okay? Yeah. Recording template. Can you scroll down? Okay, let me let me scroll down and show it to you. Okay? Ah, okay. Okay. So you're supposed to pick up the recording controller. Sorry, recording template, not controller. Okay, create it. Yeah. Okay, create. Now you see everything will be created for you. Okay, everything will be created for you. You need not have to worry. Oh. Okay. Everything will be there. The whole skeleton will be done for you. Okay, okay. Well, don't don't play around with the mouse. Let me take the controls. Okay, so you see. Oh, okay. Now you just have to enable. Uh, right click on it and then enable this. Looks like it's disabled. Okay, proxy eight 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 eight. Now go back to your uh, browser. You want me to try? Yeah, just go ahead and click on those three buttons. Okay, you set up the proxy. Go to settings. I did. Yeah, set up the proxy, buddy. Okay. Go to settings. Yeah, I did. Uh, Search with proxy. Proxy. Yeah. Okay. Go to LAN settings. Okay. Local host 8888. It's already been yeah. set up. Okay. Yeah. Click yeah. on OK. Yeah. Okay. Now go ahead and start recording on the G meter. Okay. Now go to the browser. Yeah. Just maybe type demo kettle. Don't use any other okay, website. Sure. No, no, no. Don't use that one. You know, it will. There are a lot of security things on that website. So can only you see? It? I can see it, but don't use that website. That's what I'm saying. Okay. So what? What else? Demo kettle is what you're supposed to use. I've sent you. I've put it down on the chat window. Take that link from the chat window and use that. Okay. Can you see the chat window? All. Okay, copy it from the chat window. Okay. Okay. I'm right. I couldn't see on there. You don't Just see the chat. Let... You don't know. Okay. So let me let me send it to you on an email then. Sure. Demo. So what is your email? Uh S E M A Samai Y. Hang on one second. Yeah, I got it. 
So guys can leave guys, you know, it's a simple issue. Okay, let me take care of that. It's demo kicker guys demo kicker. I don't know whether you said you got it, right? Yeah, I got it. I'm right. Here. Okay, that's not what it is. I deserve card is not what it is. It is demo kicker. Yeah. What is that percentile 20? I don't copy and paste it, buddy. Don't don't type it. Okay. Okay, I've sent it in an email. If you want to copy paste it, you can do it. Okay. Let me stop the recording, guys. Stop the recording. Uh, yeah, did you see it says your connection is not?